Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with easy, fun-sized corn dogs. That's right, not only are these corn dogs easy and fun, because we're doing them in the oven and not deep frying them, they are way, way less messy to make. And above and beyond all that, I thought the timing was perfect for these, since pretty much every carnival and fair got canceled this year, which of course was terrible news for corn dog fans, as well as for people trying to win stuffed animals they don't even really want. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by cutting up our hot dogs into the appropriate size. And for this, we're gonna need four regular adult size hot dogs. And what we wanna do is cut these so that once they're placed in, they come up just slightly above the top of the pan. And what we'll do to check that is place one of our hot dogs into the center of our muffin tin. Whoops, there we go. And we'll go ahead and score that with a knife so we can determine the perfect length. And yes, I need either a sharper blade or a duller hot dog. But anyway, we'll go ahead and score our wiener. And then we'll use that as a guide to cut the rest of our pieces. And as luck would have it, for me that ended up being six equal pieces per hot dog. Although to get that last one really even, I had to cut a little bit off the end. Which in hindsight is kind of crazy, since this is not an exact science. But I couldn't help myself. But anyway, the real point is a hot dog this size cut into six pieces should work out just fine. And that's it. Once our hot dogs are prepped, we can move on to mix up our batter which is gonna start with one large whole egg, to which we will add a little bit of vegetable oil, plus a few tablespoons of white sugar. Oh, and when you sprinkle that in, try to make it form the shape of a white swan. Okay, it's all in the wrist. And by the way, people that don't cook, they don't get to see magic like that. But anyway, we'll finish up the wet ingredients with some milk, and we'll go ahead and take a whisk and give that a quick mix. Oh, and I should mention, a lot of these cornbread batter recipes call for buttermilk, which I like to use in cornbread, but I find a little bit too tangy for corn dogs. So what I do is just use regular milk, and then I'll add just a little touch of white distilled vinegar, which you see me doing here. And for me, that gives this batter the perfect level of acidity. And then to finish this, we will add our dry ingredients, which will include, of course, some cornmeal. And then we'll also need some all-purpose flour, as well as some baking powder, plus a little bit of its good friend baking soda, as well as a touch of salt, and then last but not least, a little shake of cayenne. And that's it, we'll grab our whisk again and mix this until thoroughly combined. And two keys here for this coming out like corn dogs, and not like a mini corn muffin with a chunk of hot dog inside, is that we want our batter to be relatively thin, and believe it or not, slightly overmixed. So I want you to go ahead and whisk this with reckless abandon. And by mixing a little more than we would if we were making muffins, or a cornbread, what you're going to get is a texture way closer to an actual corn dog once it comes out of a deep fryer. And then one more mini tip once that's mixed. I like to let that sit for about 10 minutes or so before using. Which is perfect since we need a few minutes to prep our muffin tins. Which I'll do by brushing very generously with some vegetable oil. Which I find necessary even though these tins are sold as non-stick. Plus extra fat helps these get a little bit crispier around the edges. And I have to say that coating the inside of these with softened butter probably would work out better because that's gonna coat the entire surface. But butter's not really a flavor I associate with corn dogs. So I go with the oil, but you decide. I mean, you guys are after all the Kenny Loggins of your fun size corn doggins. And as long as we give these tins a little extra lubrication, it doesn't really matter. And that's it, once those are prepped, we can go ahead and transfer in our batter, which I'm gonna do with this little sorbet scoop. Although this stuff's thin enough, you could probably pour it out of some kind of measuring cup or something. But no matter what you use, we want to fill these up to about an eighth of an inch from the top. And whether you scoop it in or spoon it in or pour it in, there will be drips. Which we can just go ahead and clean up with a fingertip. And then once our tins have been battered, we'll go ahead and insert one piece of hot dog into the center of each. Making sure we're doing that with a flat cut side up. Since any other way would be really weird. And if everything goes according to plan, once those are pushed in, the level of our batter should rise up just even with the top of the tin, if not just slightly over. So those are looking pretty good. And that's it, once those have been successfully hot dogged, they are ready to transfer into the center of a nice hot 450 degree oven for about 18 minutes or so. And yes, I did put a pan underneath in case there was any drips. But anyway, we'll cook those for about 18 minutes or until they are beautifully golden brown. And if my hot dog pieces had been a touch smaller, they all would have baked up with that batter coming all the way over the top. Or if my hot dog was a little taller, they would have come out with every hot dog being unsheathed. But no, mine just happened to be the perfect size to produce complete randomness. 
and these ended up being a little more provocative looking than I planned. In fact, a few of them look like those things you see on clickbait, where the bizarre picture has nothing to do with the article. But anyway, no matter what those look like, we'll let them cool for about five minutes in the pan before we try to take them out. And hopefully if we used a nonstick pan and oiled it well and cooked these long enough, those should come out fairly easy. Okay, so that's the best case scenario. And here would be the worst case, where they sort of stick and don't really want to come out, in which case you might have to pry those out with the tip of a knife, which will take a few extra seconds. But as you can see, should still work out. And that's it. Once those are on tin, we'll serve those with some mustard. And also with some ketchup, just in case there's any kids around. Since apparently from what I hear, that's what they prefer with corn dogs. But personally, I'm a mustard-only guy. So I'm going to dip mine in a combination of half Dijon, half yellow mustard. And that, my friends, was exactly like taking a bite out of a corn dog. Right, remarkably similar in all ways. And while of course nothing baked is going to be as crispy as something that comes out of a deep fryer, after a few minutes, even a fried corn dog loses its crispiness. So texturally, by baking these, I really don't think we're losing much. And as far as the proportion goes between cornbread batter and hot dog, I think these pretty much come out exactly the same. And they're not even close to what a lot of other mini corn dog recipes are, which is really a corn muffin with a piece of hot dog in it. So I really do love how these come out. Oh, and regarding service, if you have a bunch of double dippers at your party like me, you should probably use a little spoon for your dips. Otherwise, it might get polluted with crumbs. But anyway, that's it. What we're calling easy fun size corn dog. While I can't help you win that stuffed giraffe that you really don't want at the fair, I thought maybe I could help you out with that corn dog craving. And since it had been a long time since I was a kid, I decided to try one with the ketchup, just in case I was remembering wrong and it was a good pairing, but it wasn't. And after one bite, I had to quickly cleanse my palate with another bite with some mustard. Oh yeah, that is so much better. Sorry, Junior. But whether you enjoy yours with ketchup, mustard, or both, I really do hope you give these easy, fun-sized corn dogs a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.